Hi, my name is Audrey Jackson and I'm a volunteer with the local Ann Arbor, Michigan MoveOn.org Council. I'm about to have a great interview with Michael Moore who needs no introduction at all. Michael, your first movie was Roger and Me, which was produced in 1989. How has corporate influence changed since then, if at all? Well, back then it seemed like uh, we didn't have much time left because corporate America was really taking charge. They had essentially bought Congress. Um, companies like General Motors were posting profits at that time in the billions of dollars and yet still throwing people out of work. Now, Wall Street, the Fortune 500, the wealthiest 1% that now control more financial wealth in this country than the 95%, the bottom 95% combined, um, they, uh, they've made off like bandits. And um, um, only a vast, wide, concerted effort amongst millions of citizens is going to turn this around. So how can an ordinary person recognize the telltale signs of corporate takeover in their daily lives? Oh, I think, uh, I think everybody who's watching this right now has a story to tell. In fact, we, should, we could probably just stop the video right now and everybody who's at one of the house parties um, just uh, sit around and, and share your stories right now of, of how you've been screwed by corporate America. Uh, Elizabeth Warren, you know, the, who's, I think everybody knows who she is now, and she's in, in the film, of course, uh, talks about how even she, as a Harvard Law professor, cannot read and figure out her 30-page credit card contract, that little booklet they send you when you get a credit card. Now, if, if a Harvard Law professor can't figure this out, you and I are doomed. <laughs> I mean, it's... it it. And yet, it's those little things on a daily basis on how they're able to jack your rates, um, uh, the little tricks they pull, and they're constantly pulling them. So as long as profit and the profit motive runs this game here, I, I don't see any way. We're just going to, we'll, we'll have house parties next year and the year after that and the year after that about the next issue and the next issue and the next issue. Because again, we're not calling the shots. So are we all just doomed to be corporate robots? Or is there a way to fight back? Oh, I think here's how I actually look at it. I, I, I see us, we're in this lifeboat, and the boat is taking in a lot of water. Over in the corner of the boat is a little Dixie cup. Now, if you were in that boat that was sinking, and rationally, you know that that little Dixie cup is not going to save you. You're not going to be able to bail enough water out with that little cup in order to save yourself, right? You know that. But really, what would you do? Would you just sit there and watch the boat go down? Or would you grab that cup and just start bailing like hell? Because maybe, maybe, maybe you could save your life and everybody else in the boat. I don't think you'd sit there. I don't think any of us would sit there. You'd grab that cup. Well, that's kind of where we're at right now. There's a little cup that's still there. It's still sitting there. It's called the U.S. Constitution. And, and we can take that, and we can all just like, you know, as fast and as hard as we can, work like the Dickens to save everybody in that lifeboat. So that's the option I, I choose. I recognize what I'm up against. I know we may not win, but I'm not going to sit here and do nothing. So what are some stories of inspired organizing and direct action that you have experienced in your travels? I'll tell you just my own personal example of last week, uh, the health care bill. My congressman, our congressman here in northern Michigan, Bart Stupak, you might have heard the name, uh, was going to derail uh, this health care bill because of his personal religious convictions about uh, what women should be able to do with their uteruses. And, um, and I and others here organized uh, our neighbors uh, to just pound him with phone calls, uh, emails, uh, picketing, um, anything that we could think of. 
Some people even got creative. One person decided to announce that she's running against him in the August primary. So um, it took about three or four days of that. Uh, and then he cried uncle and gave in and voted yes on the bill. So I saw a very specific example locally of how you know people, and we could have just sat back and said, well, how are we going to, he's a congressman, he's got millions of dollars behind him from these rich people, and then, you know, yeah, we could have sat and said that, or, or we could have done what we did, and we did it. Um, and as much as Bart and the other members of Congress might like their money, they like the job better. They want to stay in their position, especially because once they're no longer members of Congress, they're going to get a better job if they've stayed there longer than one term. So they have a vested interest in listening to you and I. So taking on Wall Street seems to be the fight to end all fights. So how do we tell our friends and our neighbors what's at stake? I actually think that um, they have absconded with our country. And I don't know if we're going to get it back. That's the honest truth. I think we can. I think there's like a, there's like a thread that we're hanging on to where the democracy is still in our hands. But um, if we don't do something really quick, and I mean really quick, um, four years from now, I think you can just forget about you know, thinking that you and I have any sort of say in what's really going on. Now, it's still written down on a piece of paper that you and I um, are still in charge, at least on paper. It still says that. And I got to believe that the wealthy, the scariest thing for them is that document, is that constitution that gives us ultimately the power. Because no matter how much money they can gather for themselves, there's, there's, there's still that, that nagging thought probably in their head that, geez, you know, when we all go into the voting booth to close the curtain, we don't have any more damn votes than anybody else. We just have one per each of us. And there's only 1% of us, and there's 99% of them. What are we going to do? Hell, let's just hope that they, you know, we fooled them enough. We've, we, let's hope we've dumbed them down enough. Let's hope we've filled them with enough despair, like Mike was talking about, so that they won't get up off their butts and do something. Um, that's, what they, that's what they've got to hope for, because if we actually did use the power we had, uh, well, that wouldn't be a happy day for them. So what else would you like Move On members to know as they watch your movie this weekend? I want people who are watching uh, this film or who have watched it um, to have a, a real sense of um, that it doesn't have to be this way. I'm tired of living in a country where people are, have to live with such fear, fear that they're not going to be able to pay the mortgage next month, fear that their kids really aren't going to be able to go to college, fear that they don't, nobody knows whether they're going to have a job in six months or a year. I just think we're better than this. And it's shameful that we allow these companies, this economic system, to control us in a way that really isn't best for the planet, isn't really best for ourselves. And I'm, and I'm not saying... You know, people shouldn't be able to make money or do well or work hard and better yourself, whatever. That's not what capitalism is. Capitalism is a system right now that is set up to protect the interests of the richest 1%. And it's to help them get richer. And it's to make sure everybody else works their butts off so that that happens. That's just patently wrong. And it's un-American. And we shouldn't tolerate it. Michael just spoke on big corporations that have tanked our economy. This weekend is the first step in a longer campaign with Move On. On Tuesday, May 4, local moveon.org councils will be organizing town hall meetings so that we can discuss the crisis in our democracy and in our economy. We want to demand that Washington take bold action to represent Main Street, which is all of us, versus the interests of Wall Street. We need your help to organize these town hall community meetings. And at some point, we will send you additional email information. So we want you to sit back, 
enjoy the movie, and thank you. <laughs>